she talked to this 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 man this successful man this man that was respected in his community by his friends and family that had uh, acquired so much, had done so much, accomplished so much. She talked to this brother like he was a child. It was a, it was like a soothing motherly talk, but stern. It's like your mom getting on to you. We're doing it in a lovely, stern way. And this was a grown man. And uh, I ain't gonna lie, man, listening to this, listening to it, I got emotional. Cause I'm like, man, that could be me. And only that could be me, it's like, man, I didn't even know this man, but I respect the, the discipline. I respect the success. It's not easy getting to the point he got to. So I respected that without even knowing him and to see where he was at that point, it's like, wow, man, you, you really got to appreciate life and just take, take it one day at a time. And, uh, yeah, man, that, that was life changing for me. I'm talking about in many ways. Man, I had thought about getting a bike, a motorcycle. That changed my mind. When that happened to him, uh, I found out the backstory of that, how he got to that point. Yeah, that changed my mind. And he was an avid rider for years, for decades. Uh, he grew up with bikes. And here I was thinking about getting a bike. And I didn't grow up riding bikes. You know, I just something I wanted to get into, but that changed my mind. And so I was like, man, I'm good on that. But it just changed my perspective on life witnessing that. So even though I might have not should have been involved in that relationship, I did learn a few things um, from that relationship, uh, from both of them, from him and her. And I learned a lot about myself what I was willing to tolerate and not tolerate. You know, here it was, man. She was willing to invest in my company, in my business, take me to the next level, where I never have to think about going back into uh, the corporate America, working for someone. She had the means, she had the financial means, uh, but I wasn't willing to do it. I wasn't willing to do it I wasn't willing to sell my manhood to come up. I wasn't willing to let her run me. Uh, and I tell you, she was aggressive, man. She was she was aggressive, man. I had I had to check her a few times, like just her approach. You know, so I don't know if she thought she was better than me or what. You know, she never openly said that. It's just the vibes I got. Uh but uh, I had to check her a few times, but I wasn't willing to sell my soul to come up. Now, fast forward, man. <clears throat> where did I draw the line? <clears throat> so, where did the breakup happen? So, man, I told you this arrogant uh, attitude, this arrogant energy she always expressed, man, about the cars, the home, the travel, you know, just everything. <clears throat> and uh, I had two upper hands though in, in the bedroom you know not to get you know <laughs> not to get vulgar but yeah I'll, I'll put it down right yeah I'll put it down that's why I had the upper hand and just everyday life like she couldn't run me and I got I got the impression in their relationship, she was very mouthy and uh, probably ran him a lot. And he maybe suppressed some things. He suppressed, well, you know, maybe he did suppress some things. But in regards to her, I'm sure he suppressed some things also and dealt with some things. And um, yeah, I wasn't having it. Yeah, I wasn't having it. Yeah, I don't, I don't care what you got financially or you can take me to another level. 
Nah, not happening, man. I got to be the man. I pay my own way. Listen, she wanted to pay uh, for the trip to uh, Houston. Now, she invited me. Yeah, you be paying for the room. Although she didn't really pay for it. She had so many points. But um, I pay for my own food. I put the gas in. And she kept trying to give me her card. Like, y'all be careful with that, brothers. I know you think it's cool. I, I know, man. Uh, you think that's the life. Man, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a trade-off. Nothing's free in life. It's a huge trade-off. And what are you selling? What are you giving up to her to receive something from her? What are you giving up? Everything's a trade-off in life. And so I just w wasn't really willing to trade my masculinity, you know. Um, on the outside, man, she was very feminine, very feminine, um, beautiful woman. But if you really dealt with her, man, she had a lot of masculinity, man, a lot of aggression. And so you had to check that thing, man, constantly. And you had to stay on point. Too much of a task, man. Too much of a job. So she started getting on my nerves, really. But this is where I said enough is enough. So she's getting real serious with me. I'm digging her, but I'm not really into her like that, man. You know, I'm digging her, though. Um, she's cool, but her attitude, her energy... Is keeping us, keeping me from really gravitating towards her like that. So, man, I started separating myself from her slowly. I started being busy. I start, I stopped being available. And uh, she started picking up on that, right? And so she started complaining, whining. She she wants time. She wants to see me. But nah, man, I got something to do. Even if I don't have anything to do, I got something to do. Because I'm trying to separate myself from her. Now, this one day she calls me. She's like, I really need to see you. <clears throat> Can you stop by? Man, she's just going on and on. She's like, this is important. So I'm like, okay. So I go out there, I get to the gate, she buzzes me in, and she's like, uh, the door is going to be open, just walk in. I'm in the study. Now, I, I don't think at that point I've ever been in the study, or I don't remember what the study was. But anyway, so I walk into her door. I just, I walk in, and she's like, I'm walking, she's like, I'm over here. So I look to my left, and that's her in the study. And, um, bro, she's sitting back in this chair, man, this recliner, I guess you would call it. Man, like, she's Al Capone, like, or Scarface or something, man. And she's in front of her laptop. So I'll go in there, I'm like, what's up? What you want to talk about? And she's like, uh, she was like, she turns her laptop towards me, the screen. And she's like, look at this. <clears throat> so I look at it. I'm looking, I'm reading. Bro, she's done a background check on me, man. So I don't hide the fact, man. I, I've done a little dirt in my younger days. I hadn't been in any trouble, uh, Man, probably probably over twenty, probably over twenty five years, something like that. But you know, in my in my younger days, I did some hustling, man. So she brings all this up, my background check, man, and she did a deep one. Something came up when I got in trouble when I was in, in I was seventeen, man. Uh, that doesn't always come up when people do background checks, you know, jobs and things. But this came up. Uh, some hustling I, I did out of the mall when I was young. So I'm like, man, you did a bad.